Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today I'm going to be taking a look at a couple of very rare and very delicious uh, blended scotch whiskeys. The first one we're going to take a look at is Duncan Taylor's Black Bull 30 from roughly around 2009 when that was released. And second, Compass Boxes The General, the very famous bottling from them that was released in late 2013. Now a few details about each of them. Price point first. We'll talk about how Black Bull 30, when it first released in 09, was roughly around 175 to 200, maybe 225, somewhere in there. So it was a high price, especially for back then. Uh, but it was 30 year old sherry whiskey. Okay, I mean, look at how dark that thing is. It's ridiculous. All right, Compass Box the General was a little more limited. Okay, there was only 1,698 of these to go around. The retail price on it was roughly around $275, $325, so a little bit bigger of a jump in 2013. Um, but the other thing to note is that it was very rare because there was only two parcels that created it. One cask had whiskeys, malt and grain whiskeys, that were blended together when they were initially young, aged 33 years. The other one is reportedly 40 years old. Now again, Compass Box cannot confirm that because they can only tell you the youngest whiskey in the mix. So 33 and reportedly 40. Uh, bottled at cast strength, which happened to be 53.4% or 106.8 proof. So those are the specifics on them. Now back to the Duncan Taylor Black Bull. The Black Bull 30 um, was a combination of 50% malt and 50% grain whiskeys. Uh, matured for those 30 years and it was bottled at 100 proof now I don't believe that is cast strength you know they probably added a little water to it to bring it down to that but it was a lower price anyway so we're gonna go ahead and check it now on the to the nose of the Black Bull 30 Whew. definitely sherry sherry driven it's uh, I would definitely lean it more onto the sherry bomb aspect type of things. But I will say this, it's not totally covered up because I can still get the really nice malt whiskey character coming through. It is brown sugar, red fruits, red rope licorice, definitely some roasted nuts, dark chocolate. almost like a toffee character searching around the rim of course always search around with your nose different levels trying to find different aromatics there's also like a little bit of a a little bit of almost like a peach aspect coming in not very much though I mean it's it's definitely covered up by the the sherry and the dates and the fig and a little bit of raisin cinnamon again clove dark chocolate leather old leather very very dark very rich on the nose now we're going to check the general a little reset wow this one is uh, more balanced, not so much sherry driven here. Honey to malt. Exotic spices. Uh, just a mix of spices. I can't, I mean, you, I pinpoint a little bit of cinnamon and a little clove, but there's more to it than that. It's almost like uh, the Cavallon Fino is the one that I kind of remember that's similar to it. The Cavallon Fino single malt is actually like walking into a spice market where it's just you're bombarded with all these different aromatics you can't quite pinpoint what it is but it's so great you know and that's kind of what I'm getting here on the spice note on the general orange oils now a little bit I would say the little peach thing that I was kind of getting a wisp of in here is definitely a little more noticeable here peach and maybe a little apricot dark chocolate, brown sugar, I would say almost brown sugar, caramel, maybe even a little butterscotch note coming in. 
It's a combination of sweet uh, aromatics. The sherry that's in here is a little bit of a more fig and and more fig and date than raisin. Just those really nice, great spices are just complementing everything. Orange oils in the back end. Old leather, a little tobacco leaf as well. Old whiskey character coming through on the nose there. Tremendously complex, a little more balanced on the general. All right, let me cleanse one more time. Okay, Black Bull 30. Oh, there's more vanilla though. It's more like a red rope licorice happening here. Okay. Oh my goodness. Above medium viscosity, very, very rich on the palate. Transitioning, developing as it goes along, very, very nicely. Okay. Mm, okay. As it enters, it's just mouth coating. It's almost like a, a really nice, rich brown sugar, but combination right away with sherried. Uh, sherry notes, uh, the the figs, the little bit of raisin and dates are definitely in there. That peach note that I was kind of getting on the aromatic may be mixed in with those red fruits, but it's immediately covered up by cinnamon and clove, um, a, a darkness, richness to it, a bitter chocolate, um, roasted nuts, almost a little bit of a ro uh, espresso bean type element going on as well, giving it very, very uh, a huge depth to the sherry note. Ah, so nice. Cinnamon, yeah, that clove is definitely up there. I would almost say the clove may be a smidge more than the cinnamon. A hint, a hint of like a, the orange oil that was nosing over there is, I'm getting a, maybe a little hint of it in the background here, but on the finish, it's just old leather, tobacco leaves, uh, on top of everything else, it's just layering. So initially up front, you get all that sweetness, brown sugar. Um, then you get the rich sherry coming in with the dates, figs, a uh, little bit of raisins, the cinnamon and clove layering on top of that. And then you start getting that uh, orange oil, a little bit of that peach just for a smidge. And then the start layering of old oak resin, old leather type thing. A little bit of tobacco just kind of layering on top of everything. Very, very long finish. Oh, and that, don't forget the, uh, uh, the espresso bean. That's that, that nuttiness, that roasted nut thing going on. All those kind of just layer on each other and just lend to a very, very nice, long finish. And while it is complex in that sense, there's nothing in there that I really can't, you know, nothing in there makes it hard for me to distinguish. Everybody is well represented layers on nicely and it's very very complex in that sense the general on the nose was so complex and and deep and rich that it was hard for me to distinguish so we're going to go to the palette now on it and see how that pans out get a little drink of water here i will say the abv 100 uh, proof on the black bull 30 is spot on um I'm sure they could have done it a little higher ABV that may have lent a little more viscosity, making a few points higher on a rating, let's say. Uh, but man, it is great drinking on its own. I wouldn't even want to add water to it, okay? The general. Yeah, that's, that's great single malt territory right there. Oh, wow. Definitely more malt whiskey driven. Oh my goodness. So, a little honey malt initially. Peaches, apricots, like I was getting on the nose. Those kind of flash up front. And then they're joined quickly with the exotic spices. Clove, cinnamon, who knows what else. 
There is a little bit of a coffee bean nuttiness to this one as well, but it's more integrated in everybody else. The sherry note is more integrated. Uh, definitely more fig driven than raisin. Uh, some dates in here. Dried red fruits, almost like a, a fruit cake element going on. On the pack end, you start getting that's when the, the oak resin, uh, old leather, a little bit of a furniture polish kind of comes in. But you can still chew on the sherry and those peaches and apricots from up front, almost like a marmalade. You can chew on them on the back end and you can still pick them up. Spices, same thing. Nobody drops out. Uh, the, the sweetness initially is, to me, a honeyed malt, a little brown sugar, maybe a little caramel butterscotch note kind of thing going on before going right into immediately into those exotic spices. But I'm telling you, if I was tasting that blind, I've never had any other blended scotch whiskey that tastes like that. Well, there's one. Um, so if you look at uh, the Chevis 38-year-old Stone of Destiny, that's one that can kind of fool you into thinking it's a single malt as well. But this one is definitely on par with that. I actually think it's better than that one. Mm, I don't know, golly. Maybe that, that should have been in the video, <laughs> uh, but wow, very, very good. Orange oils on the pack end as well. The wood element, that old oak resin, is kind of almost, it's almost a little exotic in its own right. Maybe it's the spices combining, but it makes it feel very, um, almost like a, pinion wood or a sandal wood or some kind of exotic yeah I don't know it's very very complex but beautiful beautiful whiskey and again when I turn them to look you know at the sides here I would say the Black Bull 30 is definitely darker so there is more sherried influence here even though it's a little younger by three years for the 33 here but there is more sherry it is a phenomenal whiskey on its own, and if I had a bottle, uh, or, you know, if you said, you know, hey, I'm going to give you a bottle of this to drink, more than happy. That's going to kill a lot, a lot of uh, whiskeys nowadays. Um, kind of the same thing here. The General is a little bit on a higher level, maybe a couple points higher than the Black Bull 30 for me, but... Um, Wow, I'd be happy with either one of these. So if you happen to see them at auction or by sheer luck you happen to see these in a store somewhere, oh my goodness, yeah, buy them, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, everybody keep leaving those great comments. I appreciate that. If you happen to be on Facebook or Twitter or whatever else, Instagram, I do that occasionally. You can find me there at Liquor Hound and message me there if you have any questions. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.